This would be a rather long lecture that I would like to pursue because often I was accused of uh, groundless arguments against Christianity. So this time I will use literature and for that matter ancient pagan literature which is often omitted and ignored by the Christian illiterate imbeciles in the process of proving their blind faith. So let us remember that Christianity in the form that Constantine created it at the Council of Nicaea with 300 bishops out of 1,200 invited that didn't attend the ceremony of creation of this new religion and forcing it down the throat of Romans. Uh, let us remember that this religion previously was a group of sectarians, Gnostic sectarians, and often it is argued that Christianity is like a progress in Neoplatonism. Well, nothing different. Uh, the Christian theologians, or this rabble of idiots, um, shallowed down middle Neoplatonism, filtered it through Judaism, and invented plenty of stories that were very politically um, concordant with the pressure of creating a new false religion inventing that Jesus was God, inventing that Mary, blah blah, inventing that Jesus descended to hell as an illusion principle, he never descended and he wasn't a god. Now, moving back in time to Plotinus, who was a great man living in the lair of lions, Rome, and he had an unscathed reputation throughout his life, so I would believe such a man. In the Enneads, he also committed one chapter to this Christian rabble that later became Christianity against the Gnostics and that is sufficient to say that Neoplatonics, Neoplatonism was opposed to Gnosticism and Christianity as a whole and trying to make a wedding of Neoplatonism with the Gnostic sects that later became Judaistic Christianity and must I remind you that the first Christians wanted to badly prove that they are Jews because they held Jesus to, the, to be Messiah. Not until Constantine that uh, separated these two saying that Jews were the uh, killers of Jesus and that Christianity Christians should separate themselves from Jewry. Up till 3rd century, 4th century, Christians, the truest of Christians, considered themselves the truest of Jews. Now, what I would like to posit here, we will quickly move to Porphyry against Christians, these are the literary remains. And what is interested, interesting here is that in his denial of uh, Judeo-Christianity, the Gnostics and the Christians, he is using the very same arguments that modern-day atheists use against Christianity. He points out the inconsistency in the whole of religion and the texts that required arduous work from so-called theologians and historians of the uh, bloodthirsty religion to prove that it is logical. It never was. So we have a whole armory of arguments against the inconsistency, lies and uh, slander against pagans. I will return to Porphyry later on because uh, Mr. Joseph Hoffman made a perfect description of the whole array of historical data, for example, that uh, monotheism of the Jews was uh, created in the 6th century before modern era, that the laws of Moses were an invention, a political invention in the 4th century before modern era to consolidate the political unity of the jury and so on so on so if you're interested reach for this book it's joseph hoffman porphyry against the christians the literary remains now jesus was an essen sectarian that means he was the disciple of john the baptist who some considered messiah not jesus but john the baptist and Jesus was a relevant Galilean with no noble inheritance, as some would like him to have it. He was probably stoned at the place called Litta, when the, we take Talmudic and Roman sources together. Uh, he was not crucified because, uh, because he wasn't crucified, probably. 
Uh, there are various narrations of his uh, crucifixion, however, in the Nag Hammadi uh, library. For example, the Mandians, one century post factum, whether he was crucified or stoned doesn't matter, said that he was frying in the sun for 30 days and afterwards he was scattered to wild dogs to be consumed as a liar deceiver that cast persecution into the world and treated as the worst devil ever. Now, uh, the Jews uh, preferred Simon Bar Kochba, who was uh, a rebel against the Roman rule, and he was considered the Messiah for a while because Messiah is the title of the King of the Jews. Therefore, Christos meant the Anointed One, and it's a Greek version of the Messiah. Now, Jesus was not a king; he wasn't considered a king by the Jews. He was a mockery of a king. Now. If you want to dismount and dismantle all the Judeo-Christian theology, you can reach for this text. It's highly historical. Now, we all know that pagans uh, knew the inconsistencies and illogical imbecilism of Christianity. So, we can uh, testify it by uh, reaching for Julian Autocraton. Autocraton meaning self-governing, because the emperor Julian, Julian Autocraton, had to be self-governing and in his sane mind in order to beam this power throughout the empire. So it contains plenty of interesting uh, data how, uh, for example, it is worthwhile to recall in a few words once and how we first arrived at the conception of God next to compare what is said about the divine among the Hellens and Hebrews and finally to inquire of those who are neither Hellens nor Jews but belong to the sect of the Galileans, that is, the sectarian Gnostics of the Jews belonging to the te Second Temple of Jerusalem that turned into Christianity later. Now, mm, there's plenty of uh, also theological data here. Now, why to consider the tree of good and evil when you have to taste both to pick the good? And, uh, well, it's again a great text from the 4th century mm, to go through in order to settle your mind on what kind of lies, deception and diabolic uh, Christianity was capable of as uh, uh, slaughtering bloodthirsty religion throughout centuries to destroy all noble veritable truths. Now, uh, Julian the Emperor was considered the last stand against the lies of Christians and hence he was murdered by a Christian fanatic, a zealot. Uh, he was stabbed to death and it is a sign to him that he said the word thou hast conquered Galilean. He most likely never said that, but as we know, history is written by uh, victors, no matter whether those victors are filthy swine or whether they are truly noble. So, with this information in mind, it's up to you to decide whether to delve into the great literature, which is a vast of sweet pageantry of the air, and the antique holds plenty of wisdom not only in Greek or Roman antique, but the Egyptian anthologies, the Hindi anthologies, the Buddhist anthologies, the Japanese anthologies, and so on. Here I've got the Kautilya's Arthashastra, King Governance and Law in Ancient India. It is uh, a book by Chankya, most likely, mm, by Patrick Oliver. So do not limit yourself in your researches, researches to one civilization, but Please discard this Judeo-Christian exclusivist filthy shit. Thank you. Because sooner or later they're gonna get you and they're gonna destroy your life and everything that you loved to love.